for your amazing host. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sandals Church Kids. My name is Joel, and this is my friend John. We are so excited that you're here with us today. At Sandals Church, we are all about the vision of being real with ourselves, God, and others. Today, we are in week four of our series, Connect the Dots, and we have so much fun stuff ahead. That's right. We have a pre-show, worship, and a Bible story. So do you want to see the big picture of your life? Let's check it out. Coming up, for his B or not to be. That's the question. Wow, he's got some pretty slick moves. Yeah, he dodged like six different frisbees and I think some of those were boomerangs. So today we're going to be talking about Jacob's vision, ladder edition, from our story in Genesis 28. What is the craziest dream you've ever had? Well, actually, I've dreamt this one a few times, but I've had a dream that I'm like living in a land where dinosaurs are roaming and they're all around me. And for some reason, it's always rainy. Wow, that's pretty Cretaceous. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to learn more about this dream from God and the promise he makes. But first, let's jump into one of our favorite segments, pre-show. Welcome back everybody to another unboxing. Today we received our box. We're gonna open it up and see what is inside. Owen, are you ready? I'm ready, Dad. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do you have the scissors for me? Um, no. no, I didn't give you scissors. He's only three years old. All right, here we go. Owen, do you think that what's inside is food? Yeah. yeah. What? Owen, look at this. Brown paper. What? Oh, this isn't the gift? No. No? Okay, should we take the other box then? All right. Will you throw this like that way for me? Yeah, we don't need that. Another baggage. What? I'm very excited about this because this looks like the way that my dad wraps Christmas gifts. It's bringing me lots of good nostalgia. Owen, put your finger right there and flip out that tape. You ready? Let's just tear it. One, two, three. What? A Batman car! A Batman car! <gasps> Look at this. Okay, Owen, you said a Batman car. This is called the Batmobile. I mean the Batmobile. Yeah. Okay, friends, this is the Batmobile from 1989. So it's from one of the movies they made over 30 years ago. And I never had this toy, but if you look right here, it says Toy Biz. When I think about Toy Biz, man, I think about some of the coolest action figures of all time. And the crazy thing is, is that a lot of times people are in the Marvel, Spider-Man, camp or the DC Batman Superman camp, but Toy Biz, they made toys for everything. They made Spider-Man and Iron Man and Hulk and Fantastic Four. The crazy thing is when Batman 89 came out, the movie was so big. It was a huge success and they didn't have any toys for kids on the toy shelf. And so what they did was they only got three figures out and two vehicles. So the three figures that came out were Batman, the Joker, and- And Batman. And the third Batman, no. <laughs> and Bob the Goon, which <laughs> no kid wanted. Those are the only three figures they had for this series. All right, so let's open this and see what it looks like. Oh. Okay, let me explain. In the movie, when Batman goes to get groceries or he's trying to hide from one of the bad guys or he's out on a mission, he'll use his cocoon feature on his car where basically he'll like take his keys and he presses it and then the cocoon goes and it's like a shield for his car so that way nobody can get in. Okay, let's go into cocoon mode. <laughs> this cocoon is actually in really good shape. Oh, there's actually a Batman inside. Okay, we need to talk about this. So this Batmobile is actually from the movie, but this figure that's inside is from what I liked even more, which is Batman the animated series. Have you watched some of these with me, Owen? I love it. Batman! <laughs> <laughs> so this figure is actually from the animated series of Batman, which ran from 1992 to 1995. This is probably one of the best figures they made because at some point they ran out of versions of Batman to make, so they would make him in like scuba gear and he'd be blue and green, a volcano Batman and ice Batman where he'd be all white. This is like the classic looking Batman. I know this Batmobile probably looks very plain, and that's because 
The stickers have never been put on yet. Okay, so here is the mechanism to make the rockets fire. Ooh, look at the rocket! So if you think Batman 89, this figure, this toy in this condition is over 30 years old. One of the other things that I always love to do is take a look at all the other pockets and compartments because sometimes you'll find like a bonus toy inside. I don't know if this was ever used, but we are going to see what is in... Owen, there's a bonus figure inside. What do you think it is? I think the Joker! You think the Joker? Okay, let's see. Or Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man? <laughs> I hope it's Spider-Man. Well, Owen, you were right. Look, it was Joker! Look at our bonus figure. This is also Joker from Batman the Animated Series. Uh... And I think he's the perfect villain to go next to our Batman. What do you think, Owen? Was this a pretty cool unboxing? Yeah. There's, there's this. Friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us for this awesome unboxing. We have the Batmobile from the movie Batman 89. We have two figures, and look, it's in such good condition, over 30 years old. You know what? I think Batman's gonna go grab some groceries, so let's put the cocoon back on, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching our unboxing. See you next time, bye. All right, friends, we're gonna jump into a time of worship together. Worship is a great opportunity for you to think about God and thank Him for all He has done for you. Now's a chance for you to get real with yourself and with God. Take some time to think about where you are right now. Did you maybe have a great week? Or did you have a very difficult week? Maybe you just need a moment to think about it or pray about it. You can close your eyes and just be still, or you can lift your hands up to God and follow the motions from the video. How you want to worship God is up to you. Okay, everyone, get up on those feet and let's worship. Dear enemy, you are just a part of the plan for the hope and the future I now have. Dear enemy, my God is the master creator. Everything is better in his hands. You meant to hurt me.
Alright everyone, we are in week four of our series Connect the Dots. We'll see how even our mistakes have purpose when we follow God. Whether we realize it or not, God is connecting all the good and bad things that happen in our lives to make one big picture that shows us who he is. Even when we mess up, we can go from our failure to God's favor by believing and trusting that God will keep his promises to us. This week, we'll see how God reaches out to us and that means we can respond to God. All right, friends, now for the moment we've all been waiting for, our Bible story from Genesis 28. So grab a pencil and help us connect the dots. Imagine if you went to get the mail from the mailbox one day, and as you were flipping through the stack of mail, you found some bills, so you handed those to your parents, then you handed your sister her favorite magazine, but then you see a letter addressed just to you from the person that you most look up to. Maybe it's that really cool athlete that you wanna be like when you grow up, or that YouTuber that you follow that just hit a million subscribers, or the star of your all-time favorite movie. So, you rip open the letter and you see a handwritten note from them to you. It says that they want to meet you and that they talk to your parents and they're going to come hang out with you next week. That would be so amazing. And you'd probably wonder why they chose you out of everyone else in the world or how they even know you existed. Did you know that something kind of like this happened in the Bible? Let's check it out. We left our story last week with Jacob lying to and tricking his own dad, Isaac, and stealing his twin brother Esau's blessing. Well, Jacob ended up running far away from his family. And one day he was traveling and picked a spot to camp. He laid his head on a rock and fell into a deep sleep. Then he had a dream, but this wasn't just a regular dream. This was a dream from God. In the dream, he saw a ladder coming down from heaven to earth. It must have been a really long ladder. Angels were going up and down the ladder between heaven and earth, and God was standing at the top, 
Now in the dream, God told Jacob that he was the same God that had made promises to his dad, Isaac, and his grandpa, Abraham. Then God promised Jacob that he would give him lots and lots of children, land, and special happiness. This is the same special promise that God made to his dad, Isaac, and his grandpa, Abraham. God also promised he would always be with Jacob and would protect him wherever he went. That sounds like a great dream to me. Now, when Jacob woke up, he honored God by naming that place Bethel, or the house of God. Wow, I want dreams like that. The interesting thing about this story is that Jacob had just sinned big time when God made him these promises. Now, by human standards, he shouldn't be in good standing with God at all. And on top of that, Jacob wasn't even seeking God at the time. He was actually running from his problems. But God still came to him with love and blessings. And it's the exact same thing God does for us. Even when we were the worst sinners who were running from God, he came to save us. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the ladder between God and heaven and us and earth. Jesus is the only thing that connects us to God and God sent him to us. So let's take a look at today's one thing. The one thing to remember is that God reaches out to us. God reaching out to us is kind of like a Frisbee or a boomerang. When God tells us something or blesses us in some way, like he did with Jacob, we can do one of two things. We can be a Frisbee or a boomerang. So let's talk about what it means when you're like a Frisbee. When you throw a Frisbee, it will just fly through the air and then hit the ground if there is no one there to catch it. If we decide to be a Frisbee, God will tell us something and we'll hear it, but we'll let it keep going and never catch on to what he's asking us to do. So maybe God tells us that we need to obey our parents by reminding us of the command to honor our father and mother in the moment where we are thinking about talking back. If we choose to be a Frisbee, we will hear that command, but we won't catch on and we end up talking back or Maybe God will remind us that he gave us lots of good things we should be grateful for. But if we choose to be a Frisbee, we just shrug it off and decide to complain about the one thing we don't have. And we just never catch on. But we have another choice. When God tells us something or blesses us, we can choose to be a boomerang instead of a Frisbee. Now a boomerang comes right back to you. So when we are a boomerang, we hear what God says and we come right back to him with a response. So we would choose to obey our parents without talking back to them, or we would stop and thank God for all the things we do have instead of complaining. There are lots of ways to respond to God. We can obey him, worship him through song, pray to him, and thank him just to name a few. Let's check out our action step for today. Our action step says, when God reaches out to us, we can respond to God. Pastor Jeff, and I am so grateful to be with you today. Man, I just want to tell you about a time that I responded to God. But before I jump into that, let me ask you guys a few questions. Do you ever feel like down because you don't have something that somebody else has? Do you ever wish that you were like taller? Do you ever wish you were shorter? Do you ever wish you were smarter? Do you ever wish you had more brothers and sisters or maybe even less brothers and sisters? For me, I know that comes from a root of being selfish. I wake up every single morning, man, I am a selfish person. I don't know about you. My brother got this and my brother got that. My brother had a birthday during the summer and Christmas. So every six months he was getting presents. My birthday's in November, kind of stinks a little bit because it's November and then December. And so it's like, oh, I always get sweaters and pants, right? I try to just think about myself a lot and I don't think about others. And if you feel the same way, I want to challenge you with gratefulness because God wants you to be thankful in all circumstances. 
He doesn't say just some circumstances. He says, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will. Because if I continue down this road of ungratefulness and the things that I don't have, I don't have a sister, I don't have a brother, I don't have an iPad, I don't have a cool phone, whatever those things are. Whenever I go down that path, it doesn't lead to, to good ends. And so if you've said yes to Jesus and you're following after him, you need to be grateful. You need to be thankful. And I want you to write down some things that you're grateful for. And take these cards and put them in your room, put them in a book, put them in your Bible, put them on the mirror in your bathroom, places that you're going to see on a regular basis. And I want you to be grateful for things and start to practice that. Another thing I want you to do today is I want you to go to your grandparents, go to your mother, your father, go to your aunt and uncle, and I want you to find that person who has really done some great things for you, and I want you to go up to them and say, I am grateful for you. I want you to call them on the phone, whoever this person is, and I want you to say thank you. Because when we start to practice our gratefulness and we start to practice how thankful we are for the things that people have provided for us, then all of a sudden it changes our day, it changes our perspective, and it'll actually change your life. For me, man, I look back when I was a kid and I was so grateful for things as I look back now, but in that moment, I often wasn't. And today, I want to invite you for the rest of today, for the rest of this week, to pause, to stop, and to truly be grateful, even if it's not always what you want. Let's say our series verse from Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. It says, you meant to hurt me, but God turned your evil into good. It was to save the lives of many people. We hope you learned something new and remember the one thing. The one thing for today is God reaches out to me. And what can you do about that? You can respond to God. You can turn to God anytime and he wants to have a relationship with you. Now, these are some great things you can talk about with others in your family this week. Maybe journal about it and pray about it. And before we end, we're going to go into one more song of worship. So go ahead and get back on those feet. Upside down, inside out, I said upside down, inside out. I'm gonna show the world how to live like Jesus. When the world says only care about yourself, Jesus says love everyone else. When the world says get everything that you What I get
much for hanging out with us today, you guys. And one last thing before we go, you can download your Get Real Guide from the button below this video so you can always go back and reread today's story. There's a lot of fun stuff on there for you so you can learn more and remember the one thing from today. And if you want to watch more videos, you can. Just stay right here on sandalskids.tv and explore all of our content available for you whenever you want. Bye! Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you guys go, we want to take a look at some letters that you sent our way. Today, we're going to be opening up letters from Olivia, Julian, and Savannah in one of our favorite segments called Mail, Mail Time. Time. So our first letter is from Olivia, and she wrote in there, Hey, Mr. Coyote, what would it take for you to shave your beard? Well, to be honest, I've actually shaved my beard for a costume for Halloween. It was from Stranger Things, and I dressed up like Chief Hopper. My kids definitely didn't recognize me, but it was really fun. Other than that, it would probably take a million Chicken McNuggets from McDonald's. Okay, so she said a couple other things. She mentions that she's nine years old. She watches Sandals Church Kids every Sunday with her family. And she is in the process of making her very own time capsule, which is one of our favorite things that we've done right here on Sandals Church Kids. And the last thing she did, Olivia, you drew us an amazing illustration of Robot Jeff. With awesome stickers included. Olivia, thank you so much for that awesome letter. Our second awesome letter is from Julian, and in the letter, Julian let us know that he has his very own YouTube channel called The Pro Boss Gamer, where Julian takes a look at video games and plays them. That is super cool, Julian, that you're making videos on the regular on YouTube. That's right, Julian says he is eight years old, and he also wants to know if we like Pikachu, and then asks what our favorite Pokemon is. Can I just point out, Julian, I hope that you take this the best way. I feel like Pikachu's tail looks like a crinkle cut fry from Del Taco. <laughs> I actually really like it's that. True. We need like maybe a food type Pokemon. Yeah. What was one of your favorite Pokemon growing up? Oh my up? goodness, my favorite, probably any of the small ones. Squirtle, Bulbasaur, anything little, small, and I collected all the cards. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure we all know that, right? Yeah. You did too. I did. Yeah, yeah. My favorite Pokemon was always uh, Bulbasaur, and when I would play the Game Boy games, that's who I always chose. Everybody always chose Charizard, and so they always beat me because fire beats grass type. It didn't matter. I still really like Bulbasaur and I still really do. And our last letter is from Savannah. And Savannah asked if I could draw a reindeer, which I've never drawn before. And so, yes, Savannah, let's draw a reindeer right now. Okay, Savannah, there is my reindeer. Thank you so much for that awesome challenge. I always love drawing something new. So Savannah actually also drew us a picture of this super cute, adorable <laughs> little chicken. I love that. Look at the basic shapes. We've got a circle, yes. a circle, and... A, a seashell. A seashell. And also, Savannah's mom, Christy, wrote us a letter, and I'd love to share this with you guys. It says, thank you, Sandals Church Kids, for your hard work and creativity. Our kids love watching every week. Our daughter, Savannah, loves to sing and dance along with the worship songs. Me too. All our kids love the science experiments and the Bible lessons. It has been such a blessing to have this resource and positive influence for our kids, especially this year. Keep up the good work. Love, Christy. Thank you so much. This letter is so so encouraging and thank you for giving us the chance to create amazing stuff for your kids. We love you guys. If you guys are wondering how to get mail to us for a chance to be featured right here on a Mail Time segment, there are two ways you can do that. Way number one, shoot us a letter in the mail at Sandals Church Kids 150 Palmerita Avenue, Riverside, California 92507 or just send us an email, mail at sandalskids.com. And for Olivia, Julian and Savannah, thank you so much for your letters. Now that we have your addresses, keep your eyes on your mailbox 
boxes because we've got an exclusive Louis Letter mail time note coming your way. And included in this is a Louis Letter sticker and a few other fun stickers from Sandals Church Kids. Thanks so much for writing to us. We can't wait to hear from you guys next time. All right, if you- <laughs> I can't believe you screamed. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> In three, two, one.